Okay, welcome everybody to uh, this uh, uh, interview in our series talking about Cortex M55 and the brand new Ethos U55. My name is Chris Shaw. I'm Director of Product Marketing in Arms Automotive and IoT Group. My team are responsible for uh, promoting Arm IP into embedded and edge use cases. So these two new products, Cortex M55 and Ethos U55, are very, very exciting for my team. I'm really excited today that um, I have Thomas Edso from our office in Norway. And uh, Thomas, no, not Norway. It's Sweden. <laughs> Sweden. Okay, I have Thomas Edso <laughs> from our office in Sweden, uh, who is um, uh, the techno lead on the development project, which led to the Ethos U55, which we released only a few months ago. <laughs> Um, and uh, I'm going to ask Thomas some questions about the development effort that led to Ethos U55, which is really something completely new for ARM. Mm -hmm. It's a, a dedicated workload accelerator for ML workloads. So really something quite new and something quite exciting. So first of all, I'd just like Thomas to introduce himself. Yeah, so thanks, Chris. So I'm Thomas, uh, working in Sweden, England. <laughs> And uh, in the Lund, we actually have a team not only doing the hardware, so we do software compilers and, and the whole stack really for the micro MPU. And having this collaboration, on, uh, I think is really important when we develop micro MPUs. Uh, not also do we do, uh, not only do we do like the hardware, we also do software optimization for Cortex-M and the whole, so we have a holistic view, I would say, on the, on the Lund side. So my role uh, here in Lund has been to be the hardware tech lead for the last couple of years. And it's been really a pleasure to work with such a great team uh, that we have here. Oh, great, thank you. Uh, it's lovely that you make the time to talk to us. So, so first of all, as I said, this is something really quite new for ARM. So what market needs did we identify that needed filling by this, this really quite radical new product? Yeah, so if you look uh, back, ARM actually entered ML first in the client space and targeted systems that had quite large memories and, and, and good bandwidth. But it came apparent that, you know, with the progress in, in ML, uh, machine learning, it became possible to run really good stuff on smaller systems as well with less memory and bandwidth. But to do that efficiently, there was, uh, and the observation was made that you need specialized hardware for that. And, and that was uh, the start of an investigation within the technology team in ARM to come up with an architecture for, for a micro MPU. All right. So, um, so that, again, this is quite a different piece of hardware, very different from anything ARM has developed before. So you identify this need for an accelerator for a specific kind of, of machine learning workload. So how does that requirement translate into a design goal for a piece of hardware? Um, yeah, so when the task was given to us uh, from engineering to, to turn this into design, uh, we spent the first months trying to get this down to something that was a feasible to do in the time and scoping it and fine tuning it to make a really compelling product. But then it turned out during the process of building this, we got a lot of traction from customers and a lot of interesting input, which actually led us to change the design in an agile way throughout the design process. And what we actually turned out to, to be the final product was better, I would say, than what we anticipated in the beginning, more functionality. And also actually the PPA was, was turned out to be better than we initially expected. Okay, so that's really interesting. So all the way through the design process, you're actually talking to potential customers and users and maybe writers of tools and libraries and asking them, is what we're doing right for you? Yeah, yeah and the yeah. feedback, you, yeah? The feedback yeah. you got from them is changing the design all the way through. Yeah, I think we, we did that in a, in a very successful way. And I'm really proud of that part of the design process. Yeah, no, it's great. It, I guess it means that what you end up producing really fits the right need for the marketplace. That, that's that's really useful to hear. So, um, out of out of out of the whole project development, which I guess has been going on for quite a number of years, what were the most difficult problems to crack? And and you know what what was your team most proud of? Yeah. So here it's quite difficult to pick out a favorite, 
but something I'm quite pleased with is that we are able to reuse a lot of the logic we put into the design for different purposes. Uh, and also, I think the way the API turned out with the tensor level operators uh, API turned out really great for the compiler tools and the tooling. And uh, overall, that really, from a technical side, was really val uh, really good stuff. And then um, as a team, I would say we should be really proud of that we delivered on time uh, to real customers and with a PPA that was actually better than we initially promised. That's nice. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess it's quite unusual in our industry for a product to turn mm -hmm. out smaller and better than you expected. So congratulations to the team for turning out something good. So, uh, OK, so with the Ethos U55, which say we, we've now delivered and we have partners working on it, what features in that really set it apart from other devices in that space? Yes. So in some sense, I think we're fairly unique in this uh, micro MPU space being fairly early into this market. But if you, I was to pick out a few special things, it's the, that it's really customly designed with this um, embedded space. It's really good at making use of the limited resources we have there. So compression techniques and scheduling techniques in the offline compiler really makes it possible to run workloads in these constrained systems uh, at a very high efficiency. And I think that sets us apart a bit. Mm -hmm. So when, when you talk about a constrained system, what, what does that mean? Uh, you know, uh, uh, how many K of, of RAM are we talking about that, that, that you can run something useful in? Yeah, so actually the, the Ethos U55 is quite configurable. Uh, so you could, the smaller configs you can put in the really constrained system, but we're really talking about systems with flash running at a few, uh, maybe 100 megabytes per second uh, bandwidth up to something like 500. And it's in the kilobytes uh, and, and, and low megabytes, whereas you know, AI generally uh, is requiring huge amounts of bandwidth and data you know, in the higher, uh, higher levels of uh, in the AI ecosystem. Sure, I can see some people will be very excited about the ability to run complex models in in kilobytes of RAM, not megabytes. That sounds very exciting. Now, you you mentioned offline compilation and and weight compression and and so on. So, what is the tool flow like? If 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 I you know develop my TensorFlow model, how do I get that onto the U55 and make it run? Yeah, so this is actually quite simple from an application perspective. That's also something that I think has been very well received by customers. So the flow on the tooling side is very similar to us if you were to run on a normal Cortex-M system. But as an additional step, before you run your model, you will run it through this offline compiler, which will turn the model into a compressed version that where the operators that you can run on the micro APU has been compiled you know, in an optimal manner for the micro NPU. So from an application point of view, it's just another TensorFlow Lite file. You run it just as you would uh, a normal TensorFlow Lite, but it will run magnitudes faster, consuming less uh, power uh, on less flash on less SRAM. So right. it really works like magic. Right, magic, I love it. <laughs> yeah. So, so has, 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 has your team been responsible for writing that software and that hardware together? Yes, so in the de development process, we, we had very tight collaboration between the com compiler team and the software team, and also uh, actually Google uh, with their TensorFlow uh, Lite Micro. Uh, and this co co collaboration, you know, holistic view of it all, I think is, is, has been really important in, in you know, being able to get something that from a user perspective uh, works and works in an efficient manner. That's fantastic. No, that sounds lovely. So I love the concept of magic tools. That sounds wonderful <laughs> to me. So, uh, okay, uh, what use cases do you see emerging that are going to leverage this extra capability that we can now put in the hands of, of uh, product designers? Yeah, so just generally, it is magnitudes improvement you get, right? So whatever you run here is gonna do magnitudes improvements. But something that we specifically looked at within ARM is the uh, smart speaker use case, where 
you know, on a typical M-class system without accelerator and, and, and not sort of the M55, you know, traditional M-class system, you really can feasibly run simple keyboard detection and, and not much more than that. But in a system where you see the M55 and U55, you can take it to a completely new level and have full speech recognition and, and at a higher accuracy. So that's one example. I also, we're also seeing that vision unit use cases become possible with the U55. So yeah, you can have face detection, you know, use of det detection, and maybe lips, detecting moving, moving lips and eye movements and things like that. So we will be seeing vision as well at, at good frame rates. Wow, so vision on a mm. microcontroller. That, that, sh that should be possible, yes. That sounds really, really, really exciting. So, okay, the, the $6 million question that mm -hmm. everyone asks, mm -hmm. when will we be able to buy products in silicon with U55? Yeah, so like I said, the customer traction on this has been really well, uh, really, really good. And uh, we, we have customers putting it into silicon now. So I'm expecting we have silicon back during the next year. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you should be able to go to your distributor of choice and buy a device incorporating a U55. I certainly hope so, yeah. <laughs> within the next year. That's very, very exciting. We look forward to hearing about that. Um, okay. That, um, again, the question that I've been waiting to ask mm -hmm. you, if you could buy or in, a, imagine one you know, gadget or, or, or system incorporating a youth Ethos U55 that you would love to buy, what would that be? Yeah, so there are a couple of wishes. One is just improving speech recognition. It's so annoying when it doesn't understand you. But, <laughs> so I'm really hoping to see a step up in, in those devices. Uh, then on the other hand, I'm also a drummer. So having some kind of gadget attached to my drum set or you know, camera or my drumsticks that could tell me when I'm doing things the wrong way, that, that would be a really cool gadget. <laughs> Yeah, so something that could tell you whether you were ahead of time or behind time a little bit, or that particular beat was a little bit. Yeah, that, 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 that would be fantastic. Uh, yeah, I, that really sounds... hope, I really hope some developer, clever developer, does something like that. Ah, well, maybe it could be you. Maybe you could develop that. Yeah, Who knows? Let's, let's yeah. see if I can get some spare time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or I could imagine a system that could transcribe whole, you know, percussion parts into oh, musical yeah. notation. Maybe wow. even my own whilst drumming, right? Well, so, absolutely. Wow. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a fascinating use case. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, we'll wait for that to appear. We'll wait for the Thomas Drum Analyzer. Oh, yeah, to sure. appear on the market. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Anyway, Thomas, look, thank you very much for your time today. I know you're a busy man. I know you've got more products to go and develop. So good luck with those. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, to everyone listening, um, thank you for your attention. I hope you found that interesting. I certainly have. And I'm very excited, as is Thomas, about the possibilities that the Ethos U55 opens up for new products, new use cases, uh, new workloads, uh, a new excitement. Um, there's lots and lots of resources about U55 and about its companion process of the Cortex M55 um, on ARM's website. So hunt those down on the product pages. Um, and uh, if you need any more information, please do get in touch and look out for a lot more information coming uh, on these pages uh, about the Ethos U55 and future products. Thanks for your attention. Goodbye. Goodbye.